Shin Master Hunters. I think Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by an ancient vampire. Women die too in this war! Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullaney's. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Good evening, Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand? Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. Remember, don't let any strangers come into your... Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Mullaney's... Yes? What about the Mullaney's? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? I wonder. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Why are vampire hunters sniffing around here? I need to find out what they're after. Die, vermies! Everyone shall prevail! Please! 
Hello again, Mother. Jonathan! Back already? Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, son.
This woman's body has multiple lacerations. They're deep, too. Whoever did this was driven by rage. He had his tongue removed and his eyes gouged out. He was a victim of brutal torture. This one's neck is broken. He was young, probably the son. your family. They mocked my talent! Is evolution? So, this girl took lessons at the famous Doris Fletcher acting school.
dungeon has brought so much this be what I'm looking for?
So the husband had an affair with Doris Fletcher. Doris Fletcher seems to be the missing link here. It can't just be a coincidence. I should go to her acting school.
face! Oh, cross! It's locked, all right. It's one of them! Back, demon! There's an open window on the second floor. I should be able to get in through that. of hypocrites. For in front of you stands the tall queen. Can that be Doris Fletcher's voice? Where does it come from? of hypocrites. For in front of you stands the tall queen. You can but lower your head, fit only to smirk at her soil. This is despicable.
I cannot enter. believe I'm doing this. It's locked. Enter my realm. Are you here to worship or mock me? I'm here to put an end to the vampire epidemic, Miss Fletcher. Ah. But Doris Fletcher is no more. She was consumed by this putrid flesh that now enshrouds her. You feel anger for what happened to you. But I can help you. I'm a doctor, Miss Fletcher. Doris Fletcher is no more. All that remains are the dreams of the queen she was and the queen she'll be. Until then, all shall die, for that was her final wish. You killed my thumb, I summoned thee. My children of the night! Fight! Mave! Mave! I smell your fear! Your is shaking! My beloved! Your hand is shaking. I smell your fear. You shake, sir. On guard. Yeah, I'm a babe. 
Wait. I beg you, wait. What? I... I don't want to die. And I did not come to kill you, Miss Fletcher. Will you spare me, then? Save this cadaverous carcass of mine. Does your heart beat a little faster now? You fancy me then, Doctor? No, Miss Fletcher. My dead heart will beat for only one. Ah! Is she pretty? Is she sweet and tender? To me, yes. Ah! I hate her already. I know. And this is partly why you must be destroyed. You just said. That I did not come here to kill you, yes. But I realize now the threat you embody must be stopped. <sighs> Will I be remembered? Will you? You were Doris Fletcher. The greatest actress of her generation. No one can take that from you. Thank you. And farewell. Farewell. Dramatic. I love it. McCullum. How strange I seem to find you whenever I'm inquiring about that skull infestation. I mean you no harm. I'm not here for you. But once I put all the pieces of the puzzle together, I'm sure we'll have a little chat, you and me. Stay away from me, McCullum. You and all your war dogs. That I can't guarantee, Dr. Reed. But I'll let you go. For now. I should probably leave the theatre right now. Have faith, brothers! It's locked, all right. The West End should be safe now. But London is not. It would be wise to benefit from the Ascalon's protection while I continue my research during the Great Hunt. Don't forget to check every door. People want me dead. I need to leave now. So Doris just needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion through skin. Very disturbing.
Fresh water. As long as it's not holy water, I may find some use for it. For as long as I've been a member, I've never seen so few vampires attending the club nights. Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed halls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury, only you can make me smile in these difficult times. And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. I must admit the guard of Prewen impressed me. They must have spent years burning. Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Bearer. Please tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. You thrust your lance and pierced the very heart of the corruption. But some questions remain. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Ekon he deserves to be. I'm sorry, but I can't. Are you questioning my orders? No. It's just... I'm not sure I'm ready to have another progeny after what happened with my sister. The rebirth of Aloysius Dawson is a necessary step in our campaign to ensure the safety of London. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right, I'm listening. Why Aloysius Dawson? Because he is about to die. And he just may be the most influential man in England. After me, of course. Did he choose me? No, I did. My decision is very recent, to say the least, but it is entirely mine. Does he know I'm coming? He can't wait to become your progeny, Dr. Reed. Especially now that you have shown how strong your lineage is through your sister. You invited Lady Ashbury. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, 
I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. So it's a temporary admittance, then? Something of a bargain, considering the crisis we're currently facing. How would you like me to proceed? Don't worry. Aloysius has had many years to prepare himself. He has studied our kind for decades. So shall I just let him drink my blood? Yes. Aloysius will gratefully sup on your blood. His heart will slow, then stop. But he will rise again as one of us, an immortal. Is there any danger? Our blood alters a mortal body so deeply that some don't survive the metamorphosis. They die for good. But Mr. Dawson has been preparing himself for a long time. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Are you all right, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson, to make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? I'd like your advice on the matter. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? I do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turn the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. Please, tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. What would happen if I made Dawson an Ekon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight, William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord Redgrave is unable to create anything but skulls, if the poor soul survive at all. How can you be sure the information was correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker, from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. Why so vindictive? You suddenly sound like you're angry. Forgive me, Jonathan. I hate myself for it, but I feel such pride in my discovery. I'm afraid I just can't help it. Which is? He did serve William Marshall. And yes, the blood he covets as a token does truly belong to that legendary knight. But he was never his progeny. His lineage is not so noble. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please, be careful.
It looks like vampires have to obey Mendel's laws when producing progeny. Powers pass from one generation to another. That's why Dawson wants me to sire him. Has been proven Good evening, by Benjamin. Many. Can I help you? I'm afraid not, Mr. Reed. You don't seem well, Benjamin. Do you need any help? I always feel ill, sir. It's like a... When science fails you, this I will see you later. I have found a very interesting letter. Your son planned to prove his worth to the gang by stealing your medicine. Oh, I see. So the little bugger thought he could use his dad to build a reputation. The gang's recruiter was dead when I found him. Perhaps you should take better care of your son. I love my Albert, sir. Believe me. It's just a... Well, I'm an arsehole, I suppose. Anyway, thanks for the letter. This is for your trouble. How are conditions in Whitechapel these days? I hear gunshots every night. It's just like the war in the trenches, Doctor. I can't stand it. 
A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now. Good evening, my dear colleague. You look ill, Miss Swanra. I wonder if your concoction will do the trick. Mm. I have no doubt it will. But I'm not against a second opinion, Dr. Reed. Well, there you have it. Take this remedy, but be discreet. It may damage your business otherwise. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Swanra. Perhaps we'll talk again. If I could get some work in, everything there, all on our worth. Good evening, Mr. Petrescu. Surely you have someone else to bother, Mr. Doctor. How do you feel, Mr. Petrescu? I would not even accept fresh water from you, Doctor. I don't need your help. Yes, you do. Please, take this. You'll feel better. I said I don't want anything. But I'll keep this for those who really need it. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. Good evening, sir. Do you remember me? If you're here for a reward, you'll be sorely disappointed. But I'll gladly shake the hand of a fellow countryman. I'm not here for a bounty. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed from the Pembroke. A doctor? In Whitechapel? What an opportunity! My name's Bates. Cadogan Bates. Do you require assistance, Mr. Bates? Not me, but your skills could help a lot of people round here. That would help my business, because I say, a live tenant's a paying tenant. It's unusual to see someone so happy around here, especially considering the current situation. <laughs> Why should I be sad now? There have always been wars, disease, tragedy. There always will be. That's an unusual way of seeing things in these trying times. I don't see why I should shed a tear for another man's woes. I'm healthy, and I intend to stay so. What is your business, exactly? I offer fair lodgings for a modest price to the poor and weary of Whitechapel. I see. And what about those who cannot pay? Well, deals can be done, if you know what I mean. Money is not the only currency. After all, I am not immune to a pretty face. In other words, you take advantage of these poor lost souls. Begging your pardon, I thought you was a man who could appreciate the complexity of the modern world. Things ain't just black and white, you know. What help could I possibly be to your business? That's simple. I already get good money from all those fleeing the war. Can you imagine what they'd be willing to pay if I could offer medical assistance to... Mr. Bates, do not make me regret saving your life in this quarantine zone. I understand, Dr. Reed, you're from a good family. Don't want to get your hands dirty. That's fine. I'll be happy to act as your middleman. I'm no saint, but to take advantage as you do, you are a despicable man who could only prosper in these dark times. So it's a no then. That's too bad. The reed tonic could have really helped people, you know, save lives. Isn't that what you do? I mean, people buy that swamberous shit. Tell me, what's your honest opinion of the increasing violence in London? People are just beginning to discover what we've always known. This city's rotten to the core. They just took their bloody time to wake up and notice it. What do you mean? People are acting like the violence is news. But it's always been savage down here. It just bubbles to the surface every now and again. You seem to have recovered well since your attack. Do you ever think about what happened to you? Not much. It was a fucking nightmare. Savages. Absolute bloody savages. Their appearance. Jesus. It made me want to puke. You'd better not come back here. 
I won't be around next time to save you. Have you heard anything about Nurse Crane and her dispensary? Not really. A man such as yourself, knee-deep in the muck of Whitechapel, must know more. Speak now. Heard it closed after the owners died. Refugees don't want to come to Whitechapel no more. Scared, I hear. You sound disappointed. As long as she was there at the dispensary, it attracted more immigrants and kept my place full. Such a shame. Why am I not convinced? Maybe it's because you lack faith. Being a skeptic must be useful for a man of science. How are conditions in Whitechapel at present? The way this sickness is spreading, I don't think there'll be enough new bloods to replace those tenants I'm losing from this bloody thing. Goodbye, Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. Evening, Doctor. Since I took an oath to help people, can I be of assistance? Well, seen better days, that's for sure. But it was bound to happen with all these refugees about. I will see you later. Goodbye, Mr. Bates. Cannot enter.
You again? What do you want this time? Can I offer you my medical expertise, Mr. Peterson? Keep your medicines for others. There is a thin line between pride and stupidity, sir. Please, take this medication. You'll feel better. All right. I'll take it then. It's not like I don't appreciate the gesture. How is the sanitary situation in Whitechapel? I'm not easily scared, but crazy killers and armed patrols are lurking about. My son's right about this place. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. And let your guard down, sir. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Do you need help, sir? To be honest, I'd prefer you take a look at my stuff. I'd rather be rich and sick than the contrary. I don't quite agree, but I won't argue with you. Please, take this. You'll feel better. Really? Free? <laughs> don't take it personally, but charity usually comes at a price. Human nature being what it is. Right then, show me what you have. Good evening, Mr. Whittaker. It's Father Whittaker, my son. So, are you still lost in your rational delusions? Don't you fear getting sick yourself? Faith gives me all I need, my son. If I must fall, then so be it. No doubt your faith will prevail, but let me give you some extra protection against the devil's work. Medicine. Blessed be your generosity, my son. Tell me the reason why you despise Joseph Larrabee so much, Tobias. A faithless shepherd is the worst criminal, for he leads his flock to the abyss by disregarding the right path. God smote this man, for he doubted. I only met him briefly. But he seemed a dedicated man who tried to provide guidance. Do you not believe in punishment, my son? I am not talking about the law of men. I am talking about judgment from heaven. I believe in the logical and factual organization of everything in the universe. God, if he exists, is just a principle waiting to be discovered. Armageddon is upon us, Dr. Reed. The final battle where every soul will be weighed. I'm afraid yours will burn for a long time. I have had enough for tonight. Goodbye.
A restaurant where the guests are blindfolded before being seated. Intriguing. It's locked. I should find another way to get into the neighborhood. I had almost forgotten I applied for a position at Pembroke. It was so long ago. I think this passage could lead me close to Aloysius Dawson's mansion. Don't you- 